Hi, and welcome to Dan's Destinations. Previously, I took the family to visit the HMAS Castlemaine Museum ship on its 80th anniversary celebration. The ship is located in Williamstown, which is about a 20-minute drive from the Melbourne CBD, across the West Gate Bridge, and then down to Williamstown, where the ship is moored at Gem Pier. Originally commissioned in 1942, the HMAS Castlemaine is one of two remaining Bathurst-class corvettes out of the original 60 ships constructed. She operated during World War II and spent much of her time in the Pacific Theater, participating in convoy escort duties. She remained in service until 1945. One of the key features of the HMAS Castlemaine is its unique design, which included a reinforced bow to break through heavy seas. This design made the ship ideal for its role as a convoy escort, helping to keep the vital supplies and troops moving to the front lines. In 1973, Castlemaine was converted to a museum ship and today, visitors can tour the ship and learn about its history, including its role in World War II and the everyday life of its crew. We boarded the ship and were given a brief history of the ship and its service. The volunteers have worked tirelessly to restore the ship and decorate it with many historical pieces to show its service. Just down the road. And they built eight of them here in Williamstown. Uh, this ship itself was attacked a number of times by Japanese bombers between Darwin and New Guinea and Dili. And it, uh, just with another ship, Armadale, evacuated a lot of people from Bernard Patano Bay in Timor. And uh, Carlson Lane was on its way back and the uh, Armadale got bombed and sunk. And they lost about 100 sailors when she went down. So that was a bit sad, wasn't it? Eh? Yeah. 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 The mess area is where the seamen lived when not at their posts. In this small area, the crew slept in four-hour shifts on hammocks suspended from the ceiling but it has now been converted into a museum of memorabilia. The wireless signal room is the main source of communication and there is a display of a Morse code transmitter. The chart room was used by officers for navigation of the ship. The room drawers housed various navigational charts and there is a voice pipe connected to the bridge above for communication. On the rear of the ship outside of the chart room, sits a Bofors anti-aircraft gun. The gun is operated by two gunners with a third person in charge of reloading. The gun has a range of 7 kilometers with a firing rate of 120 rounds per minute and the firing is done via a foot trigger. The location of the gun was to the rear of the ship as typically, fighters would approach the ship from the rear. The bow of the ship housed the main armament, the 4-inch gun with a range of 6 to 8 kilometers. This gun is also manually operated via wheels and gears without any electric motors. A far cry from the modern warships of today. A stock of ready-to-use ammunition was kept on hand in nearby lockers, with more being carried up from the magazine as needed. anniversary. 
the ship was dressed with various maritime flags for the occasion. Up another level is the main bridge with an Orlikon 20mm cannon, which was used by both Allied and Axis forces. The ammunition feed is via a 60-round drum magazine on the top of the gun. The bridge is the brains of the ship and it has been painstakingly restored by the volunteers. The white-clad pipes topped with funnels are the voice pipes. Simple metal pipes though which voice messages and instructions were shouted to various posts around the ship. These were deemed more reliable than an electrical intercom in the event that the ship lost electricity during an attack. The main feature of the bridge is the restored helm, a spoked steering wheel which the helmsman would turn to alter the direction in which the ship is moving. In the lower decks, you can see the crew quarters. The commanding officer's cabin is the largest as befitting his station but as you can see, it is still very cramped. The wardroom served as the mess and recreation room for the ship's officers. The room has been restored to its original condition, complete with furnishings and original decorations. Wardrooms have rules governing etiquette and military customs. It is considered taboo to discuss politics or religion here. The chief petty officer's mess is the designated area for the ship's non-commissioned officers. The canteen provided a welcome morale boost for the crew as they could purchase small luxuries such as canned fruits, chocolates, and other high-demand items. The cool room is also below deck and used to store perishables and fresh food. The ship's magazine is the armory where shells for the deck guns were stored. The winches used for hauling up shells are still in place and you can view the historical small arms on display through the hatchways including the Japanese woodpecker machine gun. The minesweeping store, located directly below the minesweeping array, once housed the equipment necessary for minesweeping operations. HMAS Castlemain is powered by a pair of triple expansion steam engines, located below decks which provide 1,800 horsepower, which is enough to propel her along at 15 knots or 28 kilometers per hour. One of the HMAS Castlemain's roles was to perform demining operations. Most contact mines were moored to the seabed with a length of wire. To cut the wires, HMAS Castlemain used an Oropesa sweep which is a steel torpedo-shaped float attached with wire cutters. Once the wires were cut, the mines floated to the surface where they could then be destroyed by small arms fire. Since World War I, the depth charge had been the main means of attacking and destroying submarines. As an anti-submarine vessel, the HMAS Castlemain mounted two stern racks and two throwers for launching depth charges. Their anniversary celebration coincided with Navy Week and includes performances from the Royal Australian Navy Band. There were also displays of military drones on the shorefront.
And that concludes our visit of the HMAS Castlemaine. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a bit about this historic Australian naval icon. If you are in Melbourne, do drop by to visit it and support this historical icon.